Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. No. Radiant team ban. Dire team ban. <sighs> Radiant team ban. Dire team pick. Oh. Whoa, 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 that, oh, Ryu is, Radiant that's team a key. pick. I think that's kind of, Yeah, well, I hear a static too. Interesting, that might be my end. Welcome, guys. That's a great way to start things off, but uh, we're here with We Play Season 3 Miniature against Mineski. Let's head into the draft while we try and out uh, that wind tunnel. The down case, but now... But, uh, Ten yeah, um, remaining. that's weird, where? Five seconds remaining. Well, the draft has begun. Ryu, my co-caster, is here as well. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward time. to this. Trust I haven't seen, or Signature, Trust I haven't seen in quite some time, but Maneski, they've kind of been just, you know, waltzing their way through this group stage, beating MVP Phoenix, beating, uh, TNC and a bunch of other teams. They look damn good, Reese. Yeah, they, they've been doing well. I'm... I'm kind of confused on who they replaced after they didn't do so well at the first Radiant majors, but they did qualify. Sadly enough, they they aren't going to be making it to the second one. I, I'm, I'm glad, though, a Korean team finally got to go to here. That's Dire something I'm looking forward to seeing how they do. But, yeah, Mineski kind of, I feel like, you no know, third team in SEA right now. And they can always duel with uh, Fnatic Radiant as, as well as MVP. So I'm looking to see how they do this game. and. Well, let's see how they do. Yeah, and Signature Trust, they've... Yeah, sometimes they've been hit or miss. Oracle against the Batrider, pretty good pick up there. Ten seconds Plancer remaining. Out. So, Gyrocopter Oracle against the Lone Druid Batrider. I mean, Dire Lone Druid back. has been such an important hero the past couple of weeks, but the biggest hero. I think he's got like 70 win rate over close to... over about 100 games or 90 games or so is the Chen. Not touched by either team here, and this... Ten Something in Europe that remaining. we've seen Chen first picked, first banned for a hell of a lot of the time. Five seconds Taken up by either of these teams, even even though Mineski played it Radiant today, team but the lone bat rider open. Radiant team pick. What do they do with it? Let's see. The dots, yeah. No, they they should have. I don't know. I think that Chen is like really good as well. I think he is the hero of the patch, and even though he got a nerf today. It's it, like I don't think that's still enough. Ags cooldown um, doesn't doesn't decrease it, but still the eggs with the chin creeps getting buffed up. This constantly seconds, coming remaining. in from chin. I think that's where his strongest suit lies. Not his hand of God. That's Five just kind of like you know remaining. extra. And to have it only Dieting what is the cooldown? I forget the cooldown. It's like three minutes or so. Uh, it got got back to, but still I don't think that's the point of the hero is to go hand of or his ulti. It just helps. Nerf it just a little bit for the team fighting, though. Uh, Zeus here picked up. I really like this hero a lot. However, it can be punished pretty heavily in the mid lane. Uh, what I like to do sometimes is like pick a roaming pudge, and it always I always get a kill on Zeus, and then I just go there again and get a kill. It's Five so easy to gank this hero, is what I'm saying. And trust they don't have the heroes right now to do it, but as long as they get time. something along the lines of an aggressive hero, they can definitely shut her down. And I was surprised, there was a quad ban. Is that uh, an SEA thing? Or oh, yeah. maybe, no, it's, I don't know. That's, that's heroes. an SEA thing for sure. Like, SEA teams just still Radiant love, 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 love that Queen of Pain. Uh, we've seen Mineski and TNC both utilize it Dire very well. Team pick. Thing that, you know, people, people know that SEA players in particular are very, very keen on picking that hero up and it might not be that you're scared of it, it's just that you don't want to give them that comfort hero. I, Wait, where's Invoker, man? What's going on in this game? This is weird for me. Yeah, the Invoker's the bigger one. 
Because I think with the challenge, I fully agree with you. It's uh, it's a two minute cooldown at level three on that hand of God. Um, it was what thirty seconds? The agony yep. chapter, right? But yeah, with it, like the only thing I remaining. see with that is the kind of move you do with Chen, where you know you Five you push your creeps remaining. to one lane, they shove a lane, they lose HP, and you sort of teleport them back. They heal them up for Reserve the second time. Of the lane, and then also have a heal for later on for your actual teammates. I think that's that's the biggest. Uh, the biggest nerf with that Hand of God job, but I, I agree, I think with all the buffs to Ancient Creeps, very, very potent. But Invoker got, what, his agility, his base agility nerf by B or something, 4? 6, Six? 20 okay. to 14. Oh yeah, 20 to 14, yeah. Team and then back. definitely blast up 100 mana from 200 to 300. Yeah, that's, it's, it's definitely not enough. Everybody's still on spamming Invoker, and it's still really powerful. You just still get the Midas into... You know, blink or Yules and then eggs and then you just kill so many heroes. You just we have so many spells hit. to work with and it compensates and it's just just all around a good hero. But we're not gonna be seeing it. We still could be seeing it though. Last hero, signature trust if they don't want to run the Night Stalker in the mid. Um okay, so Mineski here, last pick. Need a support hero. No, actually they need to carry. So this is a actually this is kind of weird. This support Zeus or something? Because we have Batrider, off lane, maybe Lone Druid mid. That's what they're thinking. Um, could be Lone Druid safe lane, Batrider, off lane, Zeus remaining. mid. It, it, okay. it could. It yeah, it could be, be that. Another. I'm gonna confuse as to what they yeah they're running. Uh, that's the most logical way: Zeus mid, Bat off, Lone Druid safe. But I'm just used to I guess the Admiral Bulldog, <laughs> and that's always in my mind now. The off lane. Via the bear. Especially Radiant side, you know. Admiral Bulldog off lane Lone Druid, where you double stack the creep wave, pull it across the tier 1, you get up to like level 3 very quickly. What thing? I'm asking you thinking hard about this. So yeah, what, what what are we missing here that we, we see very commonly? Invoker, and so it's like Bane, Witcher, um, Bounty Hunter is neither picked or banned here. Bounty Hunter could be a good hero to kind of roam from lane to lane, but it's only going to give you laning potential. Even though you do have good nuke power and control with Batrider Zeus, Displacement disruptor. It's, it's, it's kind difficult. of funny seeing Night Stalker and Beastmaster on the same Legion team, Commander. considering they kind of like counteract each other. What? And yeah, you know, this is a weird setup. Okay, so this is looking like I would still put Legion safe lane, Bat mid, and Lone Druid off. That that would be the best lane setup for me. Bat uh -huh. Rider uh, can dodge ganks a lot better than Zeus can and Lone Druid. Uh, although at the same time, Lone Druid Savage War is pretty damn amazing, but you still need like level. Actually, I'm trying remaining. to remember. Probably get that at level two now, the Savage War, so it should be Five fine. Seconds remaining. And Commander, you definitely want to get a dagger this game. Also, Reserve fast blink dagger time. and bat rider. You put that in the safe lane. Put bat rider in the mid lane. I mean, those are just really good team timings. But going back to the point with Master Nice. What do you feel? I don't feel like they have the synergy because I guess you could say Beastmaster is great for the day vision. Then all of a sudden you get the hawk, you get the vision, then you pop nighttime. Then you know where they're at. But it just reduces the hawk's vision by so much. Yeah, um, I'm not too sure. Maybe it's more about laning control. We've seen signature pass do beast mid a fair amount. My pro could uh, could take that one up. Kel, so let's look at this player-wise, right? Lakel's gyrocopter, probably. Oh no, the Death Prophet. Night Stalker is going to be that roaming support. I was, I was kind of thinking Beastmaster mid, Night Stalker off lane, and they look for another superhero. But both of these drafts is kind of like super <laughs> kind greedy. of caught, caught me off they're, guard. Yeah, they're like both so super greedy and are going kind of scaling really well until later stages of the game. Like Zeus. I mean, his ulti is really good for scouting out here. Situation, I kind of like the idea of it. And then you can get a flaming lasso. Uh, also, it really synergizes well with the descend back from Disruptor. So that's a really nice tool for them to have. And then as well as side of Sig, you have the initiation factor of Beastmaster and Night Stalker now running at you and roaring you. And then you always have to be wary of the false promise with the Death Prophet. Oh my. Be the scariest thing I've seen. So. Looking yeah, at both lineups, they have they have a lot of pickoff potential from both teams, and I, I think it's really close, honestly. Now, this Oracle, I feel, is going to be an integral part of the Dyer's lineup here. 
saying false promise on the death prophet that's seven seconds at level one you know where mm. healing her up and keeping her invulnerable to most things coming in then you've got fate's edict to block death out from batrider disruptor and zeus on that death prophet all that magic damage just gets you know thrown out the window but you've also got fate's edict to put onto the legion commander and the bear this oracle has so much utility the legion commander if she goes in for a duel i think she She's really got to focus down the Oracle, jump in and catch him. Or else he's just going to get disarmed and... Uh, ...down a little bit. What they what they end up doing, it looks like it's... ...will be the safe lane Legion, mid bat rider, off lane lone druid for... ...Jules and Jess Bash on the support Zeus. What about lanes for, lanes for the Dyer? It's going to be pretty standard, right? Jab, off lane Beastmaster, mid death prophet, Arc up to the top. What's, what, what was their secondary... Uh, Night Stalker. It was Oracle Night, Night Stalker. Oh, how do you feel the Night Stalker is going to be actually doing? Like, does he spend the first three minutes stacking and pulling until night time, and then roam somewhere else, or play actively very early on? Hmm. It's a good question. I think you want to definitely prioritize getting the levels up. You need at least level four, I want to say, by the first night, if possible, and then you just start running around. But at four minutes probably won't have enough space you'll probably still only be level two or three depending on if you get the bounty runes and how the pools are going but i mean if you could also just roam in i think you have the death prophet with the slow as well as the void slow but a lot of opportunities to gank the middle lane considering how much harassment the dp is going to be doing the bat rider should be low level very interested to see though these lanes are because it still could be a Zeus mid, it could be a Batrider mid, it could be a Lone Druid mid. Like, there's so many different possibilities, so we'll just have to see. And, and I think that's how the we're gonna see what your trusts are gonna do, how they're gonna apply their tempo. I think they're gonna try and shut down the Lone Druid as much as they can, and maybe the Batrider. And I, just go to your lanes. I want to see because it's really confusing me. I have I think, no idea. I think based on. Like, just based on players... Like if you can base it on players, then yeah, you should know. I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to be a Legion safe lane, bat mid, and lane lone druid. That's that's all subject to change, obviously. And anything can happen here. That's... Yeah, it's uh, pretty standard from them. Alright, here we go. Back okay. in the game, he's level 1, not, no longer level 0. It's oh, kind of funny yeah. seeing that... Pops himself up onto the last hits and denies board as well. Like that's that's the one thing that annoys me. <laughs> like, oh look, it's five versus four. He's not loaded in just yet. Right, Hawk. He abandoned. This courier. There's a there's a death courier. Ooh, a but... death. Wow, he's a reaper scythe. I like this. Where can I get one? It's Pretty cool. Uh... I like it. I want to see how he flies though. A little cutie. Gonna fly. He has to fly. He's death. <laughs> He is. He is dead. Death doesn't fly. He he teleports. He can fly as well if he wants to. I guess you could. That's kind of like levitate. I feel like it's levitation. I mean, if you levitate, but... if you levitate to a certain height in the right, sky, right. then 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 you start flying. I don't. I don't know. I don't do you know. need to flap? What's the difference? Actually, do you what need is to flap the difference your between levitation and, and flying? I feel like I, I feel like you... the definition is probably something like levitation is up to a certain height. Oh. Hey, Mal? Nice, fine. To See, a levitation in my head, it's like, oh, it kind of hovered, right? It didn't, yeah, he hovered. It didn't, like, fly into the sky, it sort of just it went, like, a, a meter above the ground or something. Yep, but, yep I don't like know. the hoverboards. Yep. But... We're, we're getting too deep into the English discussion here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I like it. So, yeah, in Invoker not picked or banned. Touched. <laughs> Completely ignored. And I, like, the nerf to his base agi, like, that fair enough, right-click attacks are going to annoy him a little bit more. Attack speed's reduced a little bit, but I didn't feel it was that big of a nerf. It wasn't. Oh, they still have their ideas. Maybe could have gotten ganked easier or something, and he... Here's just still really, really strong. In the, we'll probably see it more coming up in the European Dota. If you watch later, uh, Blaze should be casting that with Durka, but I'm here to chime in for one game. So let's see. <laughs> Salty! <laughs> no, it's, it's not my fault. No, Ryu was meant to join me for the for the game early, which got postponed, unfortunately. 
Hey, you've got all of tomorrow. You've got all of tomorrow. Ho hopefully yeah, they won't postpone any games tomorrow. With my luck, it will be. The whole day will just be canned. Like, no games tomorrow, guys. Sorry about that. Nothing's happening. It's all, uh, it's all done for. So the offlane dual lane, not still could be smashed up against the... Legion Commander. Uh, maybe if Legion goes for an Iron Talon and heads back in jungle in a little bit. It's looking like it with Ring of Protection plus Burning Blade. It's a uh, possibility here for QQ. Mid, Zeus falls up against the Death Prophet. One of the few heroes that can actually stay stay up against the DP. Very few heroes can win against the Death Prophet, but it's actually going to be Raging Plato schooling Batrider. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that he's doing this. He really needs to get to his level 2. If he can get there, then he can find, but do they get the sentry? Yeah, there we go. Finally dewarded this. This is really good for Mineski. Ryor is going to have a good time, hopefully. There. He got level 2 from the offlane. Also, do note, it's it's dual lane, so if the lone druid just sends his bear behind the well, it's a creep wave, it should be fine for him, too. Backing up those creeps. Rune up at top. I like he can get a killing rune at this point with a 1 1 build. It's not Roman ganking hero. <laughs> DD rune, the yeah, on a Zeus, not gonna be super helpful. Well, I'll sit towards the mid as Death Prophet now starts. Take control of this middle lane a little bit. Two in Soul Siphon. The Soul Siphon for me, one of the strongest, like, top three strong, strongest skills in the game. Purifying Flames. Actually, all three of them are in this game. Purifying Flames from Oracle, Soul Siphon from Death Prophet, and uh, Savage Roar from Lund. Usually, usually it's the team with the most overpowered skills that wins the game, so I, I think <laughs> Trust have won. Yeah, I, I would say it's kind of like... Fifth or sixth for me. I think Repel is still probably my one of the most broken spells in the game, for me, as well as False Promise. But still, I think, uh, yeah. Wait, you kind of hit the nail on the coffin. Spirit Siphon just going through BKB. And it's pure damage. It's just silly going through the BKB. Oh, hey, look and, at this. And in mid. Deep, look, look, Zeus is nearly dead. He bottles up just enough to keep himself alive. Back down towards bottom lane. Legion Commander. Get some damage in onto the Night Stalker, but oh, okay. Okay. The Oracle. Not actually going to ward up. Scouting out to see where the Lone Druid is, but Rior has actually moved the jungle. No Iron Talon for him just yet. I think we've seen from a lot of Lone Druids is like uh, Iron Talon into the Midas. Especially in a tough lane like this where Gyrocopter Oracle do have killing power over onto the Lone Druid hero. I'm surprised he just didn't go behind the tower and like proof skip it. I mean, I think he did that for the first wave, but he didn't keep doing it. Which... Yeah, I think you still can pull this pretty easily. It's only an oracle guarding this. Actually, you just you just go from the river and then yeah, and then that's pretty easy. So kind of weird to see that, but yeah, I agree with you. Iron Talon for sure if you're jungling like this. Needed, but he's going for the fast Midas instead, which. Yeah, I don't agree with it. You get the Iron Talon into my... Also, he doesn't have an Orb of Venom, too, so... Generous. Well, regeneration is not going to help you kill, but it is first night time, and he's level 3. Zeus, you were mentioning that he's a, you know, he's an easy kill towards mid. I think that's where the Night Stalker heads to. Two in the Void. They're up. Bulls have to be so careful right now with the rat. Oh, going on the map there is my pro. Shove this wave out a little bit more, controlling it up. This is pretty Radiant's fortunate that he has boots. I would have already died to DP and... Might even need to have a TP. I don't even know if he had a TP, if he could still live here. This is going to be so much nuke damage if they get this kill. I mean, he's really fast. Oh, he, no, he walked into the river! Walked into the river, did they not see him? They observed what? Jolt is dead! Observe observer ward up here, though. I had to see. That's the first blood that should not have happened. Maybe his uh, his teammates thought he saw it and they didn't say anything. Or maybe he wasn't paying attention to his mini map, but giving kills away to the DP early on. Well, I guess it went to the Night Sucker, but still helping out the DP. And uh, bottom lane here. Fell the back. Maybe the Zeus thought he would have like TP reaction or. Oh, Bat plus Lone Druid coming to help him out, but none of that actually came around. 
They've uh, they've given a lot of room to trust here. You know, you look at the gyrocopter, 32 to 19. The thing though for Maneski is this QQ. Even though he's been against his dual lane, he's been relatively aggressive. The Iron Talon, he's been able to rotate from lane and in jungle camps. He's picked them down relatively well. So this this 45 CS, you know, it's a little bit inflated by jungle, but not not that much. He's doing incredibly well. All the, the hawks and the boars. Oh yeah, all that as well. <laughs> Easy, but same time, yeah. It's, this is gonna be a good timing for Legion Commander's blink. He's gonna be the one setting the tempo for this game, and, and he's gonna have to do a really good job. So all the other lanes are heavily losing. I have Zeus ultimate now. Where they look for some kind of a kill, but yeah, like the Bat Rider and Lone Druid are both jungling. These two heroes are sharing the jungle. Oh god, they found the Zeus again, haven't they? Yep, he's walked into their arms with the Night Stalker. In they go with a Soul Siphon. Damage output's not enough onto the DP and my pro. With Boom Bell. Well, uh, take that kill. They got the Beastmaster down the bottom lane. Wait, where, where was the... Be what? Beastmaster was behind T3 at mid, actually. Died to Zeus ulti. Nice. <laughs> I'm sure that Zeus was just ulting to try and kill the Death Prophet or something, but he got the Beastmaster. Like, fair enough. Big kill. Pretty funny too. Uh, nice for him. I, ca I kind of assumed it was like a dual down a bot lane, right? But, uh, I look at the Legion Commander. No dual, dual down. No, no damage. In addition, I to saw him jungling, and then he was like, "Well, he had no HP," and I was like, "Oh yeah, he's definitely going back to base after this." And then I should have probably realized, "Hey, Zeus ulti killed him." Oh, oh, lag? Yes, I'm lagging. No, oh, not really. But We've had a lot of uh, a lot of issues over the past couple of days with SEA servers and teams and players having a little bit of lag from time to time. It takes like you know, 30 seconds, a minute or something. Settle down and get back in. A lot of time, you know, these uh, teams and players are playing from like LAN cafes and stuff like that. Laning phase. Is it going as well as we kind of feel it is? Yes and no. Same time, all the heroes are doing exceptionally well. But if you look at the Bat Rider, is getting so much from the jungle as well as the Lone Druid. They've successfully, like, uh, successfully shut down the Zeus, but he's already got his levels. That's all you really need on the Zeus. You have your max lightning bolt. You're going to be doing his maximum amount of DPS, and they still haven't put any pressure on the tower, the mid lane, or the top lane. So now, the trust have to be worried that they're not putting enough pressure just because of how much they're getting out of the jungle from Maneski's side. So if we do take a look at the like, net worth difference, there's, there's nothing in it, like 200 gold in it. You're exactly right. The lanes are lost, but the jungle is won <laughs> for Maneski here. <laughs> like, you with the Iron Talon, this is Man, exactly what Enigma's he's doing. Enigma's back, baby. Aww. Pick Enigma, pick Chen, they just go <laughs> east to their separate side is of it, the jungle. Is this the meta of like three junglers now? Yeah, or no. run, run double junglers? If you want to lose all your lanes. Oh yeah. Right. Come back, you know? Well, that's Rip. a big roar onto the Legion. Oh no! Gyro TP's down, hits level 8. It's a good rotation in. The Frost, make sure they take down that Forerunner. Just with the net worth like, chart here. Like, 4k Bat net worth. Rider is level 7 though. Oh my goodness, Mr. Potato. He's like 600 away from... Well, on top of this, but... Oh, he's not going to be that close any longer. <laughs> Loses about 200 gold. I, I don't know, I saw the Death Prophet coming in, I just wanted to say how close he was. <laughs> and then he dies. From my perspective, it looked like he jinxed him. It's like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, he's, he's really close to the Dyer's Blink Dagger, Dyer's not Dyer's really. <laughs> Lol, JK! Death Prophet going into the drums build, no quick yules for her, interestingly enough. Just going for kind of the safer, safer phase into drums. Up, give him the movement speed, chase down heroes like the Zeus. Zeus? Yeah, he's trying to get into the ELM for himself. How far are we from all these blinks? So, Legion Commander is about 500 off. The Bat Rider down to 1300. So, there's so gap he has to close there. Very though. Walking into Death Prophet Gyro plus Master. You know, the, 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 these big team fight ultimates, the call down, the roar. It's that exorcism. Even an early Roshan here for Signature Trust, he uh, will be pretty 
Yeah, for that's smoke. really simple for them. But they put a lot of pressure on the bottom. First was a roar with the gyro TP in. Now they're gonna come in with TP. I really like the aggression they're putting on the safe lane, making sure Legion Commander is getting shut Dyer's down, not getting that fast attack. blink dagger. They doing really good timings from Signature Trust here. And I wanted to save something for after. If yeah, sure. I'm just gonna ulti here. Under if there's gonna Bash. be any response. Jesse Bash was level six, I think they go for this. He might hit, he's gonna hit it off these creeps, right? Yeah, he's, he's always yeah, 11 XP over six. Have his Radiant ultimate. They could maybe no. go in for this, but no, they're just gonna try and fresh push other lanes. There's a smoke up on top. Radiance Basso as well. It's a duel. The Oracopter and the Oracle, they both sit behind their tier one and make sure they're not gonna get caught, so there's no fear from Maneski they can actually gain out of this. So going back to the point that I was gonna make is Ether Lens, where we didn't, the, we haven't talked about the nerf that happened today, and in, in point D is the Ether Lens. I, I think it really hurts Pudge overall because he really needs that magic resistance. But for all the other heroes, it's, I think it's still really, uh, really good on them. And I think Oracle is definitely gonna benefit the most from it this game. Zeus is is pretty good too, but I think in this game. All the Jara up at the top of the duel. Do they get the bonus damage? No, they don't. Jara will still die. Don't get that duel damage. The blinks are up now, though. That rider both have their initiation tools. Yeah, the um, the build-up of Vita Lens was always so good with like arcanes and you buy the cloak, and then the Ring of Health was just like, huh, it's kind of like a recipe. The Ring of Health doesn't do anything for me. It's just gold I have to spend to finish the item. But now they remove the cloak, it's a little, I guess it's a little clunkier to build the item and not as, it's not as great of, of a stat to build up as was previously. Right. I think hit, hitting the nerf to the item was definitely needed. But it was either you're going to take away the, the magic resistance or you're going to take away the, the HP regen. So, oh, you're blinking to the Death Prophet. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Uh, this seems to be a dead bat rider. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of sad. Oh. Jules, you don't have any mana to kill off my pro here. The ether lands up. With exorcism back in 20 seconds. I wish you could just stay here and spirit siphon the wave. That's like the worst part about BP. <laughs> <laughs> but she's uh, not. not good. He backed the fountain. Yeah, no around. mana. That's probably why. For this lone druid at bottom lane, he's got his Midas and about 1300 gold. This is the key time. Pull off this bear before he gets into that relic in the radiant. They know a DP either. They know exactly where the bear is though. The ult is thrown down. Rior doesn't stand a chance. He's like savage rod. Okay, buys him some time. He's dead regardless. <laughs> savage roar level one's pretty underwhelming. Like only 1.2 seconds compared to the 2.4 later on. It's. I wonder if you would prioritize maxing it over over rabid. Like only getting one in rabid. Just because of how useful you need it, and as well as the cooldown. 28 seconds, 16 is nothing to scoff at either. Well, I mean, it's basically his escapement. Right. It's a good way to keep the bear alive as well. Oh, this smoke is going to walk right into the beast master. They see him, but they don't actually do anything with him. There's a lasso over on the side, oh, though. Right. Ah, Oracle! Oracle! That's the hero! A trap two with the static storm is pretty good, but they're keeping this death over alive until the damage output! Oh, a false promise! Uh, Oracle, downfall of his own teammate there. Two in a row, Mineski, they lose the Batrider, but that's a good fight under their tier one. Dyer's All down to the Static Storm. Kill from Jesse Vash. Use Fates Edict. I, I, I need to go back and look at the Oracle's play there because it has to be Radiant's all on him, right? You got the great false attack. promise off, but at the same time, you didn't use Fates Edict to dispel the magic damage attack. as well as use the Purifying Flames to heal him up. So. I really need to see how, how, how do you Dyer's say his name, Exotic? No, it's Fei Fe Mao. Fei Mao. Fei Mao. Fe Mao played that. But that's a really good hold from Mineski and... Chest? That's... Hey. Like, with, with Death Prophet, being picked recently, I always have this kind of benchmark of, um, ultimates used defensively. Or ultimates that don't get a tower. And once you hit like five or six of those in uh, first like 25, 30 minutes of the game, then your game is going really, really poorly. So that, that's number one. 
that's the first ulti where she's kind of used it and nothing happened with it. She just walks in, doesn't get a tower, doesn't get too many kills and kind of dies. There are a couple more of these fights. Death Robert definitely starts to lose some of her potency. You need to keep this pressure up. You need to be the one forefront shoving into these towers. And when there are two tier ones still standing, you're allowing Lone Druid to farm up at top. And Eski definitely have a decent game of cards. You know, you've really got blade mail on your Legion command. A lone Druid has 2,000 gold saved for his Radiance. Who cares about the Zeus? You know, he's going to get his Yule Scepter soon, but this guy's just here for the throw magic damage. Yeah, it has to be really worrisome for Sig. Like, they they got in a Roche, but instead they tried to put the press, the press issue on the tower and then they got burned. And now they're doing the right thing, though. They're farming up their Gyro. They really need to take this stack, and he needs to get some kind of tanky item. It looks like he's going for the Yasha first, but... I kind of like the idea of getting a Sange first here. There's still a lot of magic burst damage coming in from Muneski. Beastmaster, have you been caught here? They blink. Master's still out of range, and that boar slows down the bat right just enough for the blink tool onto the oracle. They catch him, and the damage up is good enough. They take down two. A quick succession with the help of the Zeus salty. He's gonna die to fire. Oh, fire. No! <laughs> Easy call. Oh, that's the saddest thing ever. Well He's played. Like, I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill it for you. I'm gonna kill it for you. Oh wait. <laughs> yeah. Well Bro, played I by the beastmaster. That was some good stuff. DP, no, not. Sure. Beginning of a good comeback from Maneski, though. How how much gold does this uh, this bear have? Two thousand eight hundred. Thousand away from the relic. Except there's nearly done for Zeus. The damage output for them is a little bit awkward. This Legion commander can get super backed up and into the blade mail BKB AC. But well, I don't even know if BKB is necessary actually with like exorcism, gyro, flat cannon, stuff like that. Just want to tank up even more. He's still not too bad. So you really need to worry about the silences coming in from DP and Night Stalker, and I, that's why you, you're seeing the. Zeus go for the Yules. He realizes, hey, there's there's a lot, there's gonna be a lot of silences, and there's gonna be a lot of chasing going on. So he can always dispel the pushes and the chase chases by having a Yule. You might even see him go for a four stack afterwards or a blink, just for the most, or for the best utility items and mobility and fi team fights. I just night stalker. Feeling that this game is going to drag out a little bit longer and they need more time to get the gyrocopter stacked up, but we'll finally head into the Roche pit. I don't think Maneski know what's going on. I don't see it happening. They've got no observe. Oh, actually, they do. Probably should have seen. Uh, it's just they can't really test right now. All the heroes are just spread out, and this is something they could have done six minutes ago. And Put a lot of pressure on the tier one, so it's just a little bit of kind of like saying, "Hey, we, we can put pressure on mid, but at the time we could easy, easily get a, a free rush. But at any time they could have done that, and they would have gotten a free rush. They don't, they don't have enough. Like they need to have a four staff as well. Oh, Bat, is he dead? He's, dead. He's gonna die to the uh, the necro unit again, isn't he? Radiance mid. Unit chasing. chasing. Oh, he blinks away. Necro unit, no, stay in the no. fire. It, fire. Bats are gonna die. Burning. Oh, that beast about to die to the Zeus. Is Batrider still alive, actually? Necro unit, he's trying to- No, look at, look at the police trying to deny the Necro unit in the fire. Oh, I mean, that would have been sick if it would work. It was so close. If he had done it sooner, if he started attacking the Necro book sooner, I was really heads up play. It's just, <laughs> damn it, I realized it like one second too. Oh. Oh, I would have never thought of that. I'll just look back to the Necro and it's like, why, why is the Archer attacking the wa warrior? What's, oh, he's trying to knight in the Firefly. Dyer's Super close. Is under attack. So, so they, get, uh, they get the Aegis up on the Gyrocopter. We've got Exorcism back up in 55 seconds. Q is up here looking for Blink Initiation of the Swan. Nope, he's gonna go for the Creep. Realizing that Trust is away. I have the Necro 3 sin for Beastmaster though. Honestly, the push from Signal good. There's tons of deep push here from Maneski. So Radiant much spam coming in from Arc Lightning and everything, but they have the Aegis. Really frontline it. That's what they should be doing. Do they have an urn? No, but they still have it. You can back out and just use Dyer's Fate's Edict and Purifying Flame. This is... 
I mean, Lone Druid just got his Radiance because of that. He's gonna have it soon here in 100 gold, but still, they're not putting any pressure on the tower when they have Vegas. And it's nighttime, so it's kind of troubling. Their drums popped. Face down the Zeus, it looks like, but they'll just get the tier 1 tower. Throwing a couple of back for the good call. Oh! Rider blinks in middle tower for a target. Fallen. Maybe he can flame break back, but they were uh, looking for the glimpse back. He was trying to give vision, but they weren't in range of the glimpse. Blake kind of trying to go up there by Mr. Potato. Gosh, could but it didn't happen. That's the scary part. Dyer's like they, they were all kind of grouping up, and they almost were able to defend that tower from the next team. Like the, if they had the lone druid radiance right then, I think they would have TP in and fought because of how out of position Signatress came when they had the DP and the gyro on the front lines, and they had the four step up, four staff up for the bat rider for that team fight. Wow, Jules has a veil nearly done. Where? What? Who? No, bot ah, lane. bot lane. The duel. Another win? Yeah. There we go. Damage. And the the veil on jewels. That's gonna be a pretty big item as well. Weird build up for me now. The double row of the magi, helm, and no talisman. It just feels, it just feels a little more awkward. Yeah, it feels it feels like it costs more, <laughs> but it doesn't. Dyer's middle um, tower is under attack. This is definitely a really good build to have, especially when you're going against the the uh, air, or like the, all the summons. I was gonna say bear, but at the, at the same time they have lone druid on the side. Normally, when you see a lone druid, what's a really good item is actually go veil and just nuke down. Oh, gonna get a pick off here on the gyrocopter. Get the Aegis. Should he duel now? I don't. Ooh. know. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't have dueled that. I mean, it's free damage. <laughs> take, oh, yeah, yeah. Take the free damage. Thank you very much, Raquel. So that's the fourth promise. Then comes the exorcism from my pro roll. Back on the QQ and the damage effort. Good enough. Raquel, is he going to survive? He will heal up, actually. They turn the fight around. Sigma to trust. Taking down one, but my pro is so low. They'll heal up. Purifying flames and jewels. The rest of his. Big pick off on Legion Commander, and that's like an 800. Gain there, the majority of it going to the Night Stalker, but a ton expended by Trust. Yeah, maybe now you can put some pressure with Maneski. That's why I was kind of wondering why the Legion dueled. You're right, the dual damage is there, but at the time, if they don't get the duel off onto the Oracle, they're having a very hard time killing these heroes, and that's how they've been winning their team fights so far from Maneski. It's either dueling the Oracle and then lassoing somebody else, but. That team fight, it didn't happen. Use the duel early. And uh, I learned something today. Obviously, you get dual win, even if they have the Aegis. She said Night Stalker did benefit the most from that. He's going to have a really fast Ag now because of this. Only about 1,200 away. And now, then things get really dicey for Mines. They're going to have to be probably ulting all the time with just to initiate. And that's kind of where the synergy doesn't come in from Veil, right? If you're using Zeus ulti and you don't have Veil on the targets, then it's kind of like a useless item, right? You still can spam your, your lightning bolt as well as your arc lightning, but you're not getting the maximum amount of efficiency from it. And on the other side, Trust have, you know, like we were saying, these two forms of, of vision givers, the Night Stalker and the Beastmaster. Time, nighttime, nighttime, daytime. See exactly where Maneski are coming from. Once they get that gem up, I think it's going to be even more important for the Zeus to try and scout out with his ultimate, because warding is going to be... When there's Ag's gem on the Night Stalker, seeing every little bit of information that they got. What about the Batrider? What's he got? Arcane Boots, Blink, Four Staff. Oh, Etherland's probably going to be his next item. Oh, oh Etherland's with Flaming Lasso. Orgasm. Oh, it's so good. Let's see if Ash actually has the gold. Oh, well, Mr. Potato, he already used... No, he didn't use it. Just a little bit here by the Night Stalker. What do you think Disruptor's buying? Radiance bottom tower Saved up nearly attack. 2k. Dagger, if he's saving for this long. 
Uh, I think it's a really good positional item. Because you know you know that there's going to be an eggs on the Night Sucker. There's as well going to be a Beastmaster who's going to have his hawk up. So the best way to be in the team fights is to have a Blink Dagger on your Disruptor this game. And they already have Necro 3 out for the Beastmaster. So you can't really go Cloak or... Yeah, you can't go Glimmer Cape at all, I think, for Disruptor. So this is actually a really smart pickup from him if he does go for the... Where his money goes to the life savings of Disruptor. Oracle does have his Ether Lens. But you have to see any super like flashy plays or anything from the Oracle. You know, this is this is a hero I kind of pinpointed in the draft thinking it's gonna win Signature Trust the game. Really utilizes set correctly. Amao has had a pretty rough one, you know, he's not been feeding, he's not dying a lot. He's just been having these little moments, I don't know, of, of panic of so uh, having that realization of where his teammates are and what's needed to be done. It's allowed Mineski to come back into the game as we have a look at things. 2,000 net worth lead for Mineski right now. A 5,000 experience lead after the past couple of fights. Trust it. It felt like all their lanes were won and they had a great chance and a great foothold in the game. It allowed the Blink four staff Batrider to get up and running. Uh, he's become a fourth core. This jungling Batrider, the jungling lead, uh, the jungling yeah, well, jungling Legion, jungling Lone Druid, jungling Batrider, three <laughs> people in the jungle, basically. They lose their lanes, but they win the farm war. And the yeah, Gyro and DP keep up. That was still a good back out there. Soccer didn't have his eggs. They just acquired it. 9 a.m., so relatively early in the day. Might want to pop his darkness pretty soon, though. Oh. Okay, when is the exact timing? So it should be at 28 minutes is the next thing. Seven, yeah. So, probably wants to pop the darkness around 27. Maximum efficiency here. That's you just dodging. Neither, neither team has great warding out right now. Frost has one observer ward over near the Radiant Angel. I'm not going to respawn for another minute or so, but that's what Trust are really looking to try and bolster their efforts around. Jumping out mid and bot and controlling Radiant Jungle, because that's, like, this entire area here, this is all Roche territory. Get some water up as well. Yeah. Put holes in his But Mineski, they're dodging. Get tier 2 up at top with the Lone Droid Bear helping out. Up against the tower, and there's the vision from the Zeus. We're all on their way up to this top lane. They retreat. Go back to farming. QQ takes down the ancients. Just uh, back him up to the jungle. And this kind of sort of you know switch and bait. Uh, Trust were definitely you know prepping for Roshan. When Eski shoved top, they draw all the attention from Trust up the top. Now they kind of have to go and reassert their dominant area. Jesse Bash might be the pick off here. Draw, yeah, dead disruptor. No one to help him. It's the but they still have none of their lanes pushed. Maybe they're going to make the play in the tier middle, but they need to be very fast about this. At the same time, it also does free up time for the Death Prophet to farm more and get her BKB. They're probably going to wait for that because they realize, hey, well, our DP keeps getting blown up in these team fights. We need to sure up you know, all the burst damage that's getting onto her. But at the same time, you still have False Promise. Um, I guess you could say at the same time too, you don't want to get, you know, Savage roared all of a sudden while you're chasing a bear too. <laughs> and then you, you miss out on the kill on this lone druid. Time and time I've seen that happen. That's just going to be a rush take here from them. DP, BKB, like you said. Gyro, second BKB, and still with the Yasha. Didn't go for the S and Y, just went for Yasha Helm phase. Into the Black King bar. That's the lone druid's AC, oh my goodness. Bear, he's a beast. Radiant Smider, Fox Giraffe. They just again across this gyrocopter. Got a lot of damage behind them. They Mao actually invisible here with the rest of the team. But Mineski dodge. Shoving up on this top lane, which is interesting. There are no objectives to take up here. Just connecting a little more farm. Is that um? A Legion Commander has her BKB as well. I think the Legion Commander definitely needs one, but I want to go back on the DP. I actually think it's a long pickup for her. She should have actually went Octarine Core. The reason why I'm saying this is because you, 
your whole strategy is kind of based on Oracle, right? You, you you can't use your purifying flames. Obviously, Fate Edict kind of takes the, the place of BKB. And then you can't heal while she's in BKB. So it's sure you can false promise her. Still going to be taking damage. And you really need to focus on healing her up. As well as you get bonus heal coming in from the exorcism that will also help. So as well as the cooldown is nothing i mean it goes from 145 to what like 1 110 or something hard right now drop significant yeah there we go <laughs> that's that's all we need to know yeah, it, it, it does drop by like 30 but i i agree with you like the heal out from quick Crypt swarm and Ghosts definitely Radiant's super useful for that force price when you've got uh, when you've got heroes like Legion Commander who could potentially just blink dual. You've got dual, you've got entangling roots, lasso. There are still abilities that go through that BKB, troll up and Dyer's damage. Death profit mid ulti, or even before she gets her ultimate off. You know that's the problem about, about about this BKB. But if she's in a position where she has to pop it, the chances are she's already been jobbed on and spells have already been cast on her. The right. bottom lane. This is so annoying. I was about to talk about this too, right? Or is it, this isn't how, what happens in every single one of my pub games. It's actually making me frustrated watching this shit. Watching <laughs> in tournaments too, where you just have a bear AFK farming for 30 minutes. And then he comes out and then he just wins the game because he's got, you know, at this point, probably about the same Radiance, Assault, and Vlad's. And then all of a sudden, well, you lose the team fight because he's so farmed. Uh. <sighs> It's like, hey, you want to push? Seems to trust. You want to take out tier two towers? Well, hey, look at me. I'm a lone druid bear. Oh, they've got the roar onto the sat right at very least. The dual steps are up. You can maybe blink away. No, not in time. Down he goes. But yeah, they're trying to push top, but they're just being baited by this bear. They have to come back and defend. Like they, they just keep having to come back, defend, push back onto the lane. Jesse bashes blink the enemy bait. Oh, that's a good observe board. Very deep. Find the tier three even. That's kind of weird. I thought he would stay just to glimpse somebody back. Radiance middle tower is under oh, attack. I guess you could say at the same point he, he shouldn't glimpse anybody back if they TP because Batrider is dead for 30 seconds. They have exorcism. They really want to push the high ground. They're realizing how Vanessa can fallen. be. Mythic field already used. Cross. And of course they back. How long do they have on the egg? Another two minutes. One minute, four seconds, or something like. If they back now and push out lanes, it'll expire before they reach the base again. They only got a tier two out of that kill on Bat Rider. What are they really trying to go back for? I guess you could say Death Prophets has two K gold saved up. If she wants to get another item before they go, but essentially when you're backing out like that, you're conceding that hey, well, either we're gonna make another smoke play. Skills, or we're just content to farm into the Nooks Roshan. So, seems to be their play. See, nighttime. Yeah, it's almost day too. So, if uh, I want to say if they start getting pressured and they start losing the team fight, then then maybe the wrong move to call. But we have to judgment where the roar, the Beastmaster, the easy solo kills on for Raptor. And they follow through on this. Maneski still want to go in. There's the Blink, the Duel onto Beastmaster, Lasso as well onto my Pro. The Death was caught here, but the damage isn't enough. They've kept the Beastmaster healed up, and he can turn and fight this as my Pro pops the BKB and the Exorcism. <laughs> Beastmaster finally dies. Yeah, fair enough. He drops. And good. Has killed off one. There's the Yule Step drop. Rior, down he goes. Gem on the deck as well. I actually to kill Beastmaster and Night Stalker, but two big heroes. Lone Druid. Well, it's here for trust. That exorcism is going to last long. They could maybe go for the tier 2 at top, though. Man, Druid was so scary during that team fight. Oh, goodness. Almost solo killing the Death Prophet there. And definitely needs to get Flick for Shiva's. She's thinking about it. Really need to get the Octarine. That is, that is definitely the second to third item now on DP. And, well, all things considered, he'd use the duel on to a Beastmaster that already used Roar and Necro Book. I'd also say, same time, sure, Inner Beast kind of helps, but they don't really have a right clicker besides Gyro, and Gyro wasn't even a. Where was Gyro during that team fight? I didn't even see him. He came in from like the east to he kill off the Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's like you said, they've... Mineski have won team fights just by dueling the Oracle. Yeah. You've got to focus that hero, you know, with either, with either the lasso or the duel, with one of these single tables. Maybe that's what Q thought. Could. They both kind of lassoed and dueled at the same time. He also had the Disruptor too, if he could get off, you know, a Static Storm on him solo, as well as the Kinetic Field. Completely worth it. If you take out this Oracle the team fight, you, you win. You win 100%. Just because you don't have false promise, you don't have the the magic damage reduction from phase E deck, you just win. So at the same time it's really hard to say that just because of how much vision they have, right? From shots. We have to give so much credit to that the eggs on the night sucker and uh, well there there's the haste. Yeah, static storm's good as well with a BKB up from my pro. Lakel's already dropping low though, he's nearly dead, nearly dropped out the hood red bad chases him. Well that's with that fate edict stopping the right clicks coming through. Don't kill off. That's oh, Death Prophet. Wait, wait. Second. Jab from oh, back. Right back to <laughs> Radiant Jungle. Oh, what a shame. Thank well, you. Here's the high ground push. But SK is to go high ground here. And he just bought the Blink Dagger too on Oracle. Let's say just buy it back. Oh. Well, Sigma, if you do, no BKB on your DP. No Oracle. Jaro has cooldown. The Lone Druid Bear with that Demolish, honestly. Oh, hang on a second. Raw. They've caught Rio, but not. Nah, there we go. Take it off. Press the attack. Helps him up, but he's getting down very heavily by the kills. The Kinetic Field and the Yule Scepter. Gyro in place, and Mypro's even popped his ultimate here. It's time to bail. Maneski, gonna run and hide. The Homo Missile is still chasing down, but there's QQ with the duel and the damage output. It's just too much for Trust to deal with. And I think Maneski have got this one in the bag now. They've only got one buyback available on the Gyrocopter, and Fei Mao, I mean, you can force promise yourself, but you're not gonna go anywhere. Maneski are all still alive. Rio's like waddling back towards the fight. Summons his bear. He's got he's got no HP left. Yeah, nothing. I mean, if he had roar right now, he could potentially. No, oh, not even then. There's just too many yules to disengage. Master buddy. Yeah, he's dead. Fail. Trust. No loot the lane of racks here. No glyph available for them. That was just way too cocky of them going outside the base when it's daytime. Point to their tier two as well as BP OP on cooldown. That was that was kind of game losing, and it was really close until that point. But now you can see once DP doesn't have ulti, it's so hard for them to team fight, and as well as the nighttime factor. Massive swing, absolutely massive swing from like a 4k lead. You know that's been that's 4k lead they've had for 18 minutes. And then the game pretty much ends. Two lanes of racks gone. Thing to trust. Best of one, of course. Give up just yet. Got close to 5,000 gold on your gyrocopter. Is is this a game where you just say screw it? I'm gonna buy a rapier. I remember why they lost all the team fights is because you didn't actually buy anything. <laughs> At this point, you don't really need MKB for any evasion. Uh, Butterfly is extremely good in this situation for the bear. I think you have to go either all in. Yeah, he, he has to go all in for the rapier though, because it's just not enough damage coming in from their side. And honestly, he can ha handle the Aegis here. So this is just like, hey, we're gonna get rapier, we're gonna go down mid, and we're gonna try to end this game. So it's still a really good play from Sig, and they actually have a chance to come back into this game. I think it's like 30% it boosts up if they can get the. So. Um. Take a look at what we just bought by Maneski though. Aghanim Zeus and Aghanim's Batrider. Oh, good. I don't think I've seen Ag's Batrider in competitive. I don't think I've seen it actually work, is the thing. Like, it gives you so you can lasso another target, but. I mean, it actually, if you think about it, you have Ether Lens, so it should. Should it boost the range I, as a secondary one too? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that. That's actually a, a really good one. Can anybody tweet that? Etherlands help the Agnum Scepter lasso range. Second one. So it should increase to 500 and something. Pretty big. Okay. What is it? Let's.
Sling Lasso grabs both its target as well as the nearest allied hero within 400 range. This will do that would be 600 then. That would be, that'd be massive on it. Yeah. We'll, uh, I, it's going to be difficult to see, you know. It's going to be one of those things that's difficult. Oh, they're charging in. Frost, this is our last chance for the damage from the Zeus. Just with the Aghanims. Like, that was just the Zeus Ag ulti, and he nearly insta kills three of them. The power <laughs> of the Veil, baby. <laughs> Veil's back. Ain't damage. And now my SP just goes straight up onto the racks again. Trust have to heal up. Back in the fountain. Raging Potato. They looking for the jump. Spider, who's your target? Where's the Oracle? Sitting a little bit further back here. Legion Commander. Going in with a duel. There's the Blink Roar on the QQ. Legion's been caught on that Blink in. Static Storm not catching anyone. QQ already nearly died, but healing up through it. Dies finally. So the Rapier Gyrocopter. And my bro chases real down. This Rapier's doing work. Oh my Jules god, that's sucked off the, the, the DT. Catches Zeus and they're all dead. Batrider is the lone survivor. Trust he didn't even get his base. lasso off. Oh my goodness, it was like a complete whiff from the Batwider. It was like, what are you doing? He didn't even use it. And he could have gotten two targets there. That would have been game changing. Like he blinked in, thought about using it, like stutter stepped, and he didn't use it. So, I don't know what happened there from Tato. Rapier from Jaro. I mean, it's good in situations like this where you're on high ground, you know, you've got the defensive stance, you've got where you can just say, you know what, we have the advantage here and we'll run into you. But you have to be very careful though, like if he gets dueled, blade mail and no BKB on, he's, he's like dead. Yeah. <laughs> or if he's caught out, he really needs to have the Oracle behind him and he's just going to kill himself. I hope that, I want to see that happen, like just the Legion duel him, but no, and see what happens. But... That's the thing, right? Like once they leave their base and start taking fights outside of their base, this Rapier, good, but it becomes a liability as well, like you're saying. It'll be something that bite you in the ass. I trust aren't careful with things. They are trying to river a little bit here and just shove out their waves as much as they can. Gives the vision of them all. That got to wrath. What's going on? Three top, one mid, one bot. Oh, waiting. You here to really get off the duel of his lifetime. Kind of weird itemization from the Legion, honestly. You know, Blink, BKB, Blade Mail, then he went into Basher and that's all fine. But going back from Maelstrom, what's uh, what's up with that? It's kind of confusing to think about it. Like maybe he's thinking, alright, well we're going to put Mjolnir on the bear or something, and then he's just going to get so many procs. But it's also really, I, if you just get the Abyssal Blade, you lock somebody down, you go on a different target at the same time with Duel. So, kind of, it's the kind of thing, if you think about it on Legion, like, Abyssal Blade isn't really that great on her, just because she already has Duel, which lasts way longer, so it's 5.5 seconds, but it, it's really good if you can blink Abyssal, and then you can cast all your spells in, like, blink Abyssal, press the attack, then Duel, right then, and Blade Mail, instead of doing it all beforehand. Big item for Lakels. Stop. Rust, can you do this? Can you do this on the back of the gyrocopter? We're seeing Disruptor go for the Lotus Orb after that blade dagger. Bouncing back Roar. Oh, uh, what else? What else is there? The you can take off the silences, which is really helpful. Gabba's trying to go for an AC. Boom Bell. Gnome Scepter. Not got her anything just yet. And Aegis. In a way, four and a half minutes until that's back up. Four and a half minutes, trust half kind of hold on for dear hope. Vaneski, don't just end the game. Because it's difficult, you know, honestly, pushing out these lanes. Jab is having to deal with top lane that basically just bunk it in their base. Can't cross so, the river, they can't really shove out. So apparently what happened with the, the Batrider got, got silenced when he blinked in, but you can still cast yours and then you won't be silenced anymore. And you also, if you're thinking about it too, you, you, you kind of need to have a BKB in, the, in that regard. So now we kind of wonder why there was no Batrider Lasso in that team fight. So considering that, you either go BKB or you get the Lotus Orb onto you. Like, I, I really hope that Disruptor and they can communicate it from Jesse Vash 
as well as you know, Mr. Potato here coordination during the team fight. Aghanim step drops here. Who's? Who's, who's dropping Aghanim step drops right now? <laughs> Deuces, I guess. Deuces? No idea why. Going on. Lone Druid. When do we start to see the Lone Druid Aghanims come up? 700 gold. More than no. the buyback. Oh, yeah. Can he blink away? No, he cannot. Purge out of the Yule Scepter. Drop to the ground early. Find a good pickoff. River here, and now they're gonna all oh, the Invis Bat Rider. Jab, but I don't know if this is a kill he can really go for. You know, you need sticky napalm charges. Really get this one up and running. He drags him across a little bit closer to his teammate. An epic shield and static storm kind of off the mark, and the Necro book turnaround. QQ will come in. Not with a duel win, but with the kill. Dead for a minute with buyback available, but again they've got to push out these lanes both mid and top. Approaching these tier fours. Out of space. I wonder what better it gets now. Does. I think. Huh. Oh. I think you sell Yules and get a BKB. Or. Honestly, you kind of want to have a refresher huh? and you want to have a BKB, but he's still in. Increases your cast range of your flaming lasso. Well, this is a tough one. Yeah, I would still say having BKB and refresher is way better than having the ether lens and yules, though. Buy a new item slot. Got a seventh yeah. item. That's what you need. You know, I would, I've always thought about having seven items in Dota. Like, I think about it a lot actually, um, because it, it would help out so many heroes like Pudge. They play Pudge so much, it, it would tremendously help because you need like wands, you need sprinkles, you need burn, all these little items that eventually you have to sell, and it'd be amazing to still have. So, oh, maybe one day, maybe one day. Yeah, and maybe maybe one day is like spend three thousand gold or spend five thousand gold or something on a seventh item slot. Then that's crazy stuff. Then then I wouldn't do it. <laughs> then then you wouldn't. Do it. Well, maybe you can waste a skill point on it. Like every hero gets. No, one of its stat points reduced. Like at level level 15 or level 16 or something, you can get an extra item slot instead of skills. I don't know. That's another hotkey. Time to reformat everything. Yep. Hotkey. More item. And SQ right now a little bit uh, a little bit scared of what they're walking into. AP Jarakovsky, he's got cheese, satanic, but buying time here for the rest of the team to get. AC on the Beastmaster. I don't know what I don't know what Night Stalker's gonna buy. Do you even think about heading into right click hero? Do you wanna go utility? I kinda just wanna see hexes and stuff. See a pipe. Probably be the best. Then you need to negate a lot of this skill damage. They don't they have no sustain besides the oracle and they need if they're not gonna get a mech, at least get a pipe. To really mitigate all this loose damage because yeah he went for veil and eggs like eggs is just way too big right now King off so much damage to all the heroes 475 no 640 640 think about that and that's not even counting static field or the veil buff oh hey hey for our to lie Frost is gonna have double cheese double cheese and Aegis we give Aegis the kill, the things are coming out, Mineski, oh, you, you, you're you too late! Too late for this! Bond in time, the down cap was just good from Truster. They're gonna move themselves across with a smoke on the Double courier. Double rapier! Oh Double my goodness. Does he Think. go for it? What what do you get rid of for the, I guess you get rid of S and Y for the second rapier. I don't know, he really needs to have movement speed though. Like, there's way too much kiting. So many Yules and Blink Daggers on the side of Mineski, you, you need movement speed. And uh, I think just he should get a moon shard next. That's, that's about it. I'm not gonna go on him. Like last over. There we go. Force oh, promise close. cancels it off. Four staff away fast enough. That one second hesitation when he turned, like he blinked, he was facing to the right, and then he had to 
turn his hero to face upwards. So that one second gave enough time for the Oracle. Like, you have to do it immediately. Blink, four steps back, and then you have a chance, so. Time for Oracle to react. Still had a Blink Dagger in Oracle, so maybe they could have still got false from us off anyways. It looks like uh, another game's been postponed, guys. Threat against Team Empire tonight has been uh, postponed and moved to a later date, so we'll only have... Does that mean we only have two games today for me? We've got this game, uh, then we have NLG against Mama's Boys. I think that's it. And then we've got the NA games later on. Oh, I was, I was kind of, uh, kind of, I've been looking forward to these, like, kind of long days where it's like five, six games, six best of ones in a day. Oh, they got the last one to Boom Belt. Drag him back, and it looks like they do have enough damage with the duel, locking him down as well. Oh, Static nice. Storm, they've caught them. Jesse Bass gets them, but that BKBs, you're right. They just walk straight on through with the raw turnaround. QQ, the exorcism does way too much. The Raper comes back in, and oh, Maneski, have they thrown? Have they thrown? <laughs> the Lone Druid Bear! The Lone Druid Bear! Okay, there's a glitch. The FTP is going to get back into the base. The Lone Druid, the Lone Druid, come on, they've got to go back and defend! Oh, he's from Legion! This Aghanim steps up the Lone Druid, they jump in, they just come out of the eye, buys back, comes back in, Jab has no ultimate, he's got nothing left to give! They're just going to focus down the throne, QQ and Lone Druid Bear hit! The mid chance isn't there, they've got the damage, they're going to do it, Mendeski! Take the game with a backdoor throne push! The rest of the team are fighting, but Lone Druid, that sneaky little devil he is, takes down the Ancient. But well, you're calling for it, you're asking for it, and you got it 15 minutes in the game. I could spare. It, it happened, man. Oh, the rat was real this game. That's... Honestly, where was the lone druid at? I want to go back and see where Ryer's <laughs> bear, like, his exactly. hero was. Because he could have just bought Stin, right? You could just...